Hi everyone, my name is Aquila and this is my first tutorial YouTube video. Um, I am here today to show you guys how to shorten a necklace. Okay, this is the necklace that we're going to be working with. I kind of already taken it down to speed up the time. Um, this is a gold beaded 10 karat gold filled necklace. And my goal is to make it shorter. For example, if you have a necklace that is down to here and you want to shorten it and bring it to here, these are the tools that we are going to be working with. The first thing that you are going to need is a crimper. This is a tool you can buy at your local Walmart, maybe Hobby Lobby. Somewhere in your local area you should be able to find this. And the reason why they call it a crimper is because you are going to be using it to flatten your crimp bead. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but crimp beads are pretty crimp beads are pretty small. And what we're gonna do is for instance if you are at the end of your design, what you would do is you put the crimp bead on there. And what I'm gonna do is show you pretty much basically at the end of it you're gonna use it to lock in your design but before we get to all of that, and that's what I will be showing you at the end, this would be what you will lock into your jump ring, excuse me, or either your lobster lock. Once you create your design, you want to lock it in. But the first thing that you're going to do, for instance, if this was already flattened, you take that crimp bead, and the goal is to flatten it. So what I'm doing here, as I'm squeezing on that bead and now it's not round anymore when you initially start I'm going to show you what it looks like when you initially start your crimp bead is a round bead let's see if I can hold it on there to show you you should have a hole that you can see there's a hole there inside of that crimp bead just a small little bead but it's a hole on the inside of it. There you go, there's your hole. But it's a round little tube bead. But once you put it on the string and you flatten it, it will become flat. And that locks in your design. Okay, bead that I have this one already open and the crimp bead already off. And our goal here is to show you to how to take your design down you already know that if it is not a simple design, when I say simple, I mean that you have the same design going all the way around. Okay, in this case, the only similarity you have in this design is on each side, you have the same count and measurement of beads on both sides. Being that you have to take it down all the way to the side where you have the same design what we're going to do here is take all these beads off and I'm going to place them on my felt when I say felt it's a piece of felt or velcro that you can buy from your local Walmart something you want to put on there to actually keep your beads in place so that they won't run off the table or desk or wherever you have your design what I'm doing now is I'm taking the beads off the string and I'm going to take them off all the way down through the design and I'm going to stop right here. Okay, these are my designer beads. They are going to come off as well. Okay, and I'm going to leave off just a few. And this necklace will no longer be a hang down necklace. It's going to be a necklace that's going to be pretty much like a choker. Only because I'm showing you how to shorten this necklace. Okay, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to start back with my designer beads. Now that I got all the beads off, 
There we go. Okay, now I am putting my string back through the designer bead. And I'm going back for the same design that I had. You can choose the design that you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that same design back in. And I'm putting on crystals. And in between I'm putting gold. That doesn't matter because like I said, you're going to choose your design. I'm already back at the middle B, my little hang down pendant that I made. I even added a little crystal on the inside to kind of give it a little touch that I wanted. Okay, I'm going to take the wire because it was used before and I'm just going to cut a little piece of it off just so I can get a clear, clean, crispy that it makes it a little easier once you've used it it's good to cut it off again at the tip so it's easier to slide your beads on because once you've used it it bends it a little and I cut it just so I can slide my beads through a lot faster for time's sake for this video Okay, now I'm already at the point that I have my design from the middle back in. There you go. Okay, now I am going to add on my similar look. By similar look, I mean that it is going to be the same look I have on both sides. So, that I can create a design that is going to be totally even on both sides the beads that I have on one side I want to make sure I have the same many beads on the opposite side if I don't it will show whenever you get ready to put on your necklace and you find out that it's hanging lopsided you might want to check and count and see how many beads you have on each side then that way um, your necklace will hang in uniform so what I'm doing now is adding the beads back on this is a little faster than taking the entire necklace down. Um, if I had had the simple design that I talked about before and I wanted to open that necklace, I would hold it up to my neck and I would measure it and see where I want it to fit or how I wanted that necklace to fall. Then once you open it up, you would only have to take off a smaller amount, which would be a lot quicker when you get ready to redo your necklace. You can open it up, measure it to your neck, and then put your crimp bead back on and run it through as I'm going to show you again. Then all you would have to do is close it and then your necklace will be at the point that you want it. Or should I say at the length that you want it. Whether that be a long necklace or a short necklace, our design today and what we are focusing on is how to make your necklace shorter. What I do with a lot of my customers is I ask for them to give me a length. If they can take a basic measuring tape or something and get their measurement. A lot of um, customers may not be aware, but you can go to your local Walmart and just buy measuring tape. They are not costly at all and get that um, measuring tape and you can wrap it around your wrist or if you want to get the length of your neck or get a piece of string and and measure it out pretend like it's a necklace and then you place it on your neck by placing the, the measurement the measuring tape against it and then you'll know what length that you want or that you're going to have when you get done I normally try to keep a count of how many beads I have on each side without having to 
go back and count. But when I was moving my mat, some of the beads kind of spilled over that I had taken off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, as I get a little closer, and it looks long enough, I'm going to measure them also. It's another way you can make sure you have the same uniform side by side. Like holding it up like this. And then you can kind of give an eye view of how many more beads that you're going to need just by counting. Okay, I need a few more. So I'm going to keep going. And it's almost time to add on my crimp bead. And then I will be adding that crimp bead into the jump ring and then bringing it back through so I can get that crimp to clamp down and give it a flat surface by a squeeze of the crimper. And we'll be all done. And this will conclude my first tutorial. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos and more tutorials, please like below, comment, let me know if you have any questions and it is a tutorial that I can do to help you guys out, let me know. You can give me information if you have a tutorial on here as well. And maybe you, there is a tutorial that I can look up, look at that you have created. Okay, I'm looking at it now. And I measured it and I got a complete match. There we go. So now it is time for me to add on the crumper. What I'm doing here is taking the string, as I mentioned before, and I am sliding it onto the string. Bam. Okay. Now I picked up my jump ring. It is a closed jump ring. I don't have to worry about it pulling through. And I put it on behind the crump bead. The crump bead goes on first. I'm going to give you a better look. Closer look. Okay, the crump bead is there. It went on first. Okay. And then next I'm going to put on my jump ring that fell off on the table. Okay, let's get the jump ring back on here. Okay, there's your jump ring. I got the crimp bead on there. After the crimp bead, I'm going to slide it through. I'm going to take the opposite hand while I hold the jump ring. And I'm going to bring it back to the opposite side. I want to do that again. There's a crimp bead. I'm going to take the hand because I'm holding the jump ring with this finger. And I'm going to bring it back up to the opposite side. Hold it up. There's the jump ring. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing the string back over so I can slide it into the crimp bead again. Can you guys see that? I had it there. I'm bringing it back over the jump ring. And I'm sliding it back through the crimp bead. And I'm pulling it through. I'm going to pull it all the way to the end. I am going to use the tool again for my crimper. Not only to crimp that bead. I'm going to hold my hand onto the jump ring. And I'm sliding it back through. I have another tool that's called a needle nose plier. You guys that make jewelry is probably familiar with those. I have no idea where I, where it went, but if you live in a house with men, more than likely they picked it up out your tray. Because I don't see it right now. 
So I'm going to improvise and I'm just going to tighten it by hand. What I'm doing is putting some tension on the on the string and I'm tightening the string, the wire, and I'm just pulling it through so I can get it closer. So whenever I go to crimp my bead, I know that I've got all everything in and it'll give it a more professional look. It's not a whole bunch of string hanging out. Let's see if I can get it a little more. Sometimes I'll use this and put it inside the jump ring. And there we go. I think that's tight enough. Now I'm going to go back. You see that? And right now my crumper is nice and round. But I want to flatten it. So I am going to take the crimper. The flat part. And I'm going to squeeze that crump bead. I want to make sure I got it totally flat because you do not want your string to come out of there. So you got to get all the holes and all the space out and you want your crimp to be totally flat. There it is. It's flat again. I got it flat. Now you got all this excess string hanging. What you want to do is get your cutter and you want to put it as close as possible and you want to cut. There's your drum ring and it's all locked in. You got it tight and it's not going to slip off. Make sure you don't have any excess string hanging because a little piece of string hanging will be like a little knife behind your neck and it will scrape and cut you or cut your customer and you do not want that. Especially an infant or a small child that cannot speak for themselves. You don't want wire sticking out of your work. Okay. This is definitely a choker but as I said you want this. This is only to show you where you wanted your necklace shorter. Remember it was down here. Now it's up to here because I've taken pieces out and I've shown you how to make your necklace shorter. Once again, my name is Aquila from Jewelry by Aquila. You can find me on Etsy.com under Jewelry by Aquila 1. Remember to add the 1, Jewelry by Aquila 1. Comment below, subscribe to my channel, keep watching because I will keep showing you many more fabulous tutorials to come. Thank you for watching.